for the sixth time in a row with Muddle McLeod on the subs bench alongside George McCluskey. And there's one of the major attacking threats for Celtic, Frank McGarvey. He's playing against his old St Mirren teammates, having scored 22 goals already this season, but he was ordered off against St Mirren at Love Street in October. And the St Mirren side is minus Lex Richardson, Jackie Copeland and Doug Sumner, who are all suspended. The replacements, John Young, Jimmy Bone and young Gardner Spears. There's young Spears, number 10. That's a very big day for him. He's not 18 years old until April, but he's one of Scotland's top prospects, having been capped at under 15 and under 18 level. He's been three times named the sub this season, but this is his Premier League debut. And the man in charge this afternoon, FIFA referee Hugh Alexander of Irvine. So it's St Mern to start the match. They too in a good spell of form. They've only lost twice in their last 13 matches, but one of these defeats, unhappily for them, was against Dumbarton in the Scottish Cup. A long chase for Frank McDougall. Aiken was fouled. Well, Beckett sending it straight back where it came from. Province header. Fulton getting there before McGarvey. Now Nicholas. Good head flick down by McGarvey to Burns. That's cut out by Beckett. Celtic piling on the pressure, and they've won a free kick just outside the box. A great piece of play involving McGarvey with a head flick to Burns, and the cross cut out there by Alec Beckett, surely averting goal number one. So a very dangerous situation. Tommy Burns, Mike Conroy, David Proven, grouped around the ball. Robin takes it, and Billy Thompson saves the rebound from Nicholas. Great goalkeeping from Billy Thompson, showing real international ability. The driven free kick from Proven, he went full length to his right, and then did an even harder job keeping out the return shot from Nicholas. So, St. Martin on the break. Conroy obstructing McDougall, in the opinion of the referee. There's the arm raised to signify an indirect free kick to St. Man. Taken quickly by Beckett to stop. Here's Bone. Works that well with Stark. And that one flying just wide of goal. Well, Billy Stark took that very delicate return ball from Bone, stepped a few paces forward, and the left foot shot had Pat Bond at full stretch. He may well have had it covered, but in any event, a narrow escape for Celtic. Conroy with McGarvey dropping into a midfield position. For the moment, there's Sullivan making the forward run. No problem. Well, a good defending job by John Young. Took the steam out of that Celtic attack by stalling the approach of Proven and then getting in the important tackle. Abercrombie and Beckett on the posts. There's Roy Aiken, number six, on the six-yard line. Proven's corner kick. Aiken at the near post. And it's there! Well, Roy Aiken gives Celtic the lead. And that appeared to catch everyone by surprise. Just 12 minutes gone, 1-0 to Celtic. All coming from that flighted corner kick from David Proven. came towards the near post. Roy Aiken came to meet it. Got up in front of the St. Martin defence and the glancing header sneaking in at that near post.
Well, without some questions being asked in that St. Run defence, Billy Thompson certainly looked completely surprised that that one could find its way in at that near post. But the perfect start for Celtic. And it may be there's more to come. Here's Proven. McGrain on the overlap. And a chance for Proven. Nicholas coming short. And a great save from Thompson coming from the head of John Young. Well, that really was a save of tremendous quality. The cross pulled back, Young at full stretch, deflecting the ball towards the far corner, and there's why Billy Thompson's in the Scottish International Pool. The Green's header went to the chest of Nicholas. Another good build-up coming from Celtic, that ball from Conroy finding Sullivan. Well, that could so easily have been the second goal. Sullivan missing the chance with the build-up. Quite outstanding from midfield, building right from the back, McGrain forward to Nicholas, working it back. Eventually the telling through ball from Conroy, Sullivan made the attacking run, and the shot just off target. Nicholas going wide on the right, John Young is number four. A chance for Conroy! And Burns almost making something out of nothing. And the magic of the footwork of Charlie Nicholas creating a chance. It's Conroy's missed kick and Burns almost capitalised. Peter Weir's cross and Bonner comes for it in determined fashion. Well, Proven had lots of help wide than his right, but the St. Run defenders forcing him to go left. Sullivan to Nicholas. Well, that's the shooting part of Charlie Nicholas. The danger still not over. Frank McGarvey. Now Sullivan to Reed. Takes it back from Barnes. There's Sullivan. Another inspiring attack from Celtic. It was Nicholas that took the pass from Sullivan. The shot had tremendous power and was beaten wide by some excellent goalkeeping from Billy Thompson. Conroy to Proven. Well time tackle by Mark Fulton. Well, it's Bone, I think he was looking for, but. More than again commanding that Celtic goal mouth. Adam and Burns working it clear. Burns takes it back from McGrain. Reed has a lot of space in the left, which Beckett is trying to close down. Oh, that's a giveaway to Frank McGarvey. That long crossfield pass to Reed was read by Beckett. They appear to have everything under control. He's played so well in the match so far. With a careless pass back picked up by McGarvey and with the St. Bun defence all at sea, McGarvey scores his 23rd of the season. McGarvey trying to turn past Young. Burns up, stayed wide all the time to, to provide that option. Cross! And goalkeeping again of the highest class by Billy Thompson. It was Burns who had the dangerous, looping out, swinging cross. McGarvey with the header, and Thompson saving at point blank range.
Colin Roy is driven past, finding Proven. Rain being invited to switch the play by McAdam and obliging to find Mark Reed. And Harvey surviving two challenges. Welcome back to the second half at Celtic Park. The ground has been buzzing throughout the interval after that great goal from Frank McGarvey just on the half-time whistle. And that certainly has posed enormous problems for St. Man. No doubt suffering from the lack of three very experienced players, Copeland, Richardson and Sumner. And finding Celtic in absolutely inspiring form. for them, their goalkeeper Billy Thompson was also in magnificent form in that first half otherwise the Celtic lead could really be completely beyond redemption this is Peter Weir Reid finding Nicholas this is what the Celtic forward did so well in the first half coming off their markers but that challenge from Howard Crombie giving the ball back to St Man. Well, Conroy's challenge is just fair by referee Alexander. McGrain takes it back from Proven. Well, just tackle from Fulton. McGrain to Sullivan. This is it for Nicholas. Tyler Nicholas makes it 4 0. And Celtic have some anxiety here because Nicholas has taken a bad injury in the process of scoring. But Celtic beginning exactly where they left off. Working up that right flank, that's where so much of the danger came in the first half. Problem McGrain working it clear, the pass to Sullivan breaking. The square ball finding Nicholas in lots of space. He took his time to play it behind Thompson and take that very late challenge. Just left him on the deck. Well, a very sad sight for Celtic. Charlie Nicholas carried off by his skipper Danny McGrain. And I doubt very much if he'll take any further part in the action. Well, that confirms my view on that, George McCluskey ready to come on certainly no point whatsoever in Celtic taking any chances now with that four goal lead just three minutes into the second half now Proven trying to go all the way himself now McGarvey just wide on the post but offside was the decision in any event and I wonder, in fact, if Frank McGarvey might have been penalised for pushing also. But the flag on the near side was up, and the free kick goes to St. Man. McGrain. Here's Young under pressure from McGarvey. 
Chance again for Frank Mugabe. That's the hat trick. Well, you could find a happier man in the stadium. Frank Mugabe's hat trick against his old club. And again, a tribute to his pace and his strength. Going on to that ball with John Young. Having a strength to withstand the challenge. Then the composure to go round the goalkeeper and stroke it home to make it 5 0 to Celtic. He can play it forward. That's Abercrombie beating Conroy. Being brought down for his trouble. Good early free kick to Spears. Got a very powerful left foot. Well, Pat Bonner hasn't had a great deal to do this afternoon, but what he has done, he's done superbly. Sullivan has McGrain available on the near side. Robin back in his familiar beat, we'll look at the close control. There's Mugabe, and just squirming off the top of his head. Well, he's already had one hat-trick this season, way back at the start of the year, in August, in fact. He's got one just now, but four would be the first time he's managed it this season. So a second Celtic substitution. Mike Conroy, who's been such an important influence right in the heart of the midfield, goes off. And a warm welcome for Mother McLeod. Missed so much of the season since being injured way back in October. On to play the last 20 minutes. Free kick to St. Martin, Stark, fouled by McAdam. We are playing a short one to Stark. Still Billy Stark. Runs to McGarvey. And there's the run from Sullivan. Thompson coming all the way. Oh, what a fine piece of goalkeeping. St. Mun defence stripped again. Thompson acting as a supplementary sweeper, coming out to clear the danger. And Jimmy Bourne letting fly from 25 yards or so. Oh, another careless pass back, giving McGarvey a chance to make it four. And Thompson doing enough to turn it wide. A corner kick. But really, this is my defence. Looking as though they have a death wish. Give away again to McGarvey. Once again, Thompson to the rescue. Collins corner kick, headed in by McAdam. Away by Stark. Tommy Burns. Just beyond McCluskey. Now oh, there's Logan taking this pass from Bone. Trying to leave Tommy Burns. The pass going behind Fulton. Made a long run from deep. Now Fulton's out of position. Robin going all the way. He's got McGarvey ahead. Well, he sat there as determined to get his fourth goal. Taking that pass. Letting go first time beyond. Thompson's right hand and beyond the far post. This is Bone. Stark making the break on the right. Logan's in the box, so is Spears. Aiken taking no chances. And John McCormack coming right into the box. He is arriving on the goal line. Bonner missing out again, and 
that one goes wide also. Jimmy Bone. All these corners in the last few minutes causing the Celtic defence a lot of trouble. Pat Bonner coming and missing on two occasions and that time Jimmy Bone really might have done better. Aiken impeded there by Magaviti. Sullivan back to McGrain. McAdam up to join in the attacking act. This is McCluskey. And that's goal number six. Well, there's Billy Thompson. What an afternoon it's been for him. Some tremendous saves, but beaten for the sixth time. And George McCluskey taking. Eventually came to McCluskey, cut inside with a lot of pace, and that finishing shot leaving Thompson stranded. McCluskey's ninth goal of the season, and the sixth goal that the Celtic supporters were asking for just a few moments ago. Sitman is still trying. Oh, here's Jimmy Bourne with a chance for the consolation. Well, it's been that kind of day for St. Martin. Coming straight back off the post with Bonner beaten. Now Logan trying to get the ball past Reed. Winning the corner kick. to St. Man, and I'm sure the final whistle will come as welcome relief to them. Into the final minute, here's Proven. Sullivan bursting forward on his outside. And the pass just catching him with the wrong foot. Getting through to Aiken. Still Roy Aiken. McCluskey. The Burns. Running into trouble. Well, that layoff just a little bit too neat from Logan. Still McGrain. Bond's in a forward position. Well, it really is a jamboree. George McCluskey's second goal. Well, once again, the build-up from Celtic. Opening up the St. Bond defence, leaving it in tatters and giving McCluskey a chance to show the power of his right foot finishing. Poor old Billy Thompson. The draggled figure, and again the final whistle. Reaching a goal, as did the half time whistle. Seven goals to nil. Celtic's biggest win of the season. They won a European Cup for their side by six goals to nil in, in August. And there's Frank McGarvey, the man who's won the hearts of the big Celtic support this afternoon, getting a standing ovation. Three marvellous goals from him, seven in all from Celtic. And a performance which spells the Premier League Championship all over.